push the button. Okay. You ready? You're on. Oh, hi. <laughs> Good morning. It's Thursday, uh, July 23rd, 2020. And uh, I was so delighted when I saw that today I was going to be reading out of Romans, the eighth chapter. And uh, blessed are those who had devotions on the day that we had, uh, we're reading the sixth and seventh chapters of Romans. So I thought, oh, good, I get Romans 8. That's wonderful. But as I was reading Psalm 18 this morning, which is, if, if I were to have uh, a favorite psalm, this would certainly be close to the top of it. And I want to talk to you about something this morning that we don't talk much about because we see it as such a negative. But I want to talk to you about suffering this morning because suffering is a reality for every human being. We don't like it, or we don't want it, but we can't escape it. And so, since we can't escape it, we need to find God in the midst of it. And so, the context of Psalm 18 is, it's a Psalm that David wrote after God had delivered him from uh, Saul, who chased him around the wilderness and kept trying to kill him. And David wrote this psalm, and it is so incredibly expressive. And how often I've turned to this psalm during uh, times of intense suffering and read it and found such wonderful relief. But there are, there are verses in here that I'm almost afraid to read. And so I want to look at these verses this morning, and starting with verse 20 of Psalm 18. It says, The Lord has rewarded me according to my righteousness, and according to the cleanness of my hands, he has recompensed me. i got to put on my glasses. For I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not acted wickedly or departed from my God. For all his ordinances were before me, and I did not put away his statutes from me. I was also blameless from him, and I kept myself from iniquity. Therefore, the Lord has recompensed me according to my righteousness, according to the cleanness of my hands in his eyes. Wow, that's bold. That's a lot. That is very bold. Uh, and if we look at the context again, and we remember that David had the ability on two different occasions to kill Saul. He had occasions to turn the hearts of the people away from Saul by exalting himself. But he did neither of those. Because David understood that whatever was happening was from the hand of God, and he trusted God in that. And he allowed God's suffering in his life to bring him into the man that God intended him to be. That's one of the reasons he was a man after God's own heart. He accepted what God brought to him. And we can go on and read that, and it's just a glorious psalm. And as I was reading that this morning, I was remembering that the, the worst suffering we go through is the suffering where we did nothing wrong. People talk about us or backbite or people uh, persecute us for one reason or another, not because of anything we did, but perhaps because of what we didn't do. But what we didn't do, we didn't do it because of our conscience toward God, because we wanted to honor Him and worship Him. And that is a place that is hard to accept suffering. And we can also say, but I did nothing wrong. And yet, we'll turn over to Romans this morning, and we look in, um, oh, I guess, let's look at, verse 18 it says for I consider that the suffering of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that is to be revealed to be revealed in us and I suppose I should have started in 16 it says the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God and if children we are heirs also we are heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ 
if indeed we suffer with him in order that we may be uh, glorified with him. Jesus, of all the people who ever suffered, Jesus, his suffering is incomparable. And he truly did nothing wrong. And yet he suffered. And it is really a glory to suffer with him. Peter said, don't count it strange when the fiery trial comes upon you that is to try you. And dear brother James said, count it all joy, my brethren, when the various trials and temptations come your way because of what those produce in our lives. So I may get stoned for saying this, but I hope you suffer today. I hope you suffer for righteousness. I hope you find the grace of God today that overcomes every fear, every dread, every hurt. Suffering is a part of our lives. And if we're not suffering for Christ, then we should really take inventory of where we are. Because following Christ does involve suffering. But if you suffer today, then I pray that the grace of God will so fill your heart and your mind and that the joy of knowing that in Him you are righteous and that you are sharing in Him that which will lead to eternal glory with Him. Don't be afraid of suffering. Do not be afraid of hardship. Find God in it and your life will be so blessed. I love you. Forgive me for asking God to make you suffer today. But if I'm suffering, you suffer. We'll suffer together. And we'll find the grace of God in it together. I love you and ask God's richest blessing upon your life today. Go with God.